I just interviewed David Klein. I like just finished it. It's really exciting. I can't wait to share it with you. And I cannot play the interview just raw, like the whole thing, because he actually shared some information with me that he doesn't want to be public just quite yet. Well, okay. So who is David Klein? I've done a few videos on him, but I would say the information in those videos which is what I found out in just from the public, all the different news channels are saying this about him, you know, might not be the story. So I'd say watch this interview because he explains things like, um, for instance, oh, who is he? You're probably wondering who he is. If you have not seen my previous videos on him, you probably don't know who he is. Or maybe you do. <laughs> who am I to assume that? Anyway. He is running this contest and people are calling him like the real life Willy Wonka. He calls himself the founder of Jelly Belly. And when you like Google it, you'll see like Jelly Belly is like, no, he just came up with the name Jelly Belly. Well, David says otherwise. And I have to be frank here. I believe him after talking to him. I believe him. And I think that people are not spending the time to look into it. And since Jelly Belly says, um, no, he just invented the name that it's easy to just believe Jelly Belly because they're a big company. I mean, I did. I believed them. And that's what all the other news channels are saying. But a lot of time with news channels, it's just that same information recycled over and over, you know? Anyway, so he has this contest going and it was to win one of his candy factories. Well, it is to win one of his candy factories. And there's a lot of I think misinformation out there about what the contest entails, what you're going to win, and we're going to clear all of that up in this video. And so, but yeah, here we go. I wanted to try out a new screen recording app because the current one only allows me to do five minutes in the free version. And so I found this other one and it has like a little picture of me on the side, which is cool but I needed to confirm my email. The only reason I'm telling you this is that I checked my junk because I was looking for the email and guess what was in the junk? It said Spectrum Confections, you know, that's David Klein's candy company. And it was a very short email. It just said, let me look at it. This is David, it had a number and it said, thank you. <sighs> I'm gonna call. Okay. Ah, why, why is my heart rate get going? I have the article up, so if I need to reference anything, I can just have the article right here. I have his website up. And I have what Jelly Belly said about it up and my questions up. Okay, I'm going to call him. <laughs> this is exciting. I'm like triple checking that I called the right number. Okay, I need to get in the right head space. I just need a second. Hi, David. My name is Kelly, and I'm a YouTuber. I had, um... Oh, wait a minute. You contacted us. Yes, right? yesterday. And your oh, email... Yes. What happened to you? How come we didn't get in touch with you? Your email went into my junk, and so I just saw it today. Oh, okay. So... I don't think email has a right to go to junk. <laughs> I think mean, you should see it first and then decide if you want to send it away. I know. And it was just, like, such a... Hap like Wait, I, can I, I can't. I can barely hear you, and I want to enjoy this conversation. Are, are you close to the phone? What kind of phone are you on? Here, I have you on speaker, but I set my phone on the table. Now I have it up by my mouth. Can you hear me better? A little better, yes. What part of the world are you in? Where are you? I'm in Tacoma, Washington. Wait, hold on here. Tacoma, Washington. Is that where Brown and Haley is? Brown and Haley. I know the Almond, Almond Roca. Yeah, Almond Roca. There's a very okay, cute factory. Brown and Haley, 
makes them daily except on Sunday. Oh. <laughs> I've been eating Today almond roca. <laughs> Very. I know, I know Bob Clare who runs that business. You know where most of their product is sold? Where? Asia. Oh. They do millions and millions of dollars a year. They export it to Korea and Japan. I didn't know. Cool. Now, how close are you to their factory? Um, maybe two miles. Oh, wow. Does it smell nice when you go outside? Right now, there are forest fires, so it smells like a campfire. But oh, my the, gosh. The, there is a rumor that Tacoma has an aroma, but it doesn't. Maybe if the tide is out, it smells just like the sea water, but that's it. Okay. Tell me what brought you up. First of all, are you following our, our treasure hunt? Uh, well, that's kind of, I wanted to ask some questions. You have so much information out about it that I have followed some, but I have not okay, good. gotten what all the like info. Okay, good. you have not been able to find out? In the next part, this is the only part, I think, in the whole interview where I didn't actually get the answer to what I was asking. I did try to clarify my question, but I still didn't get the answer. And like after asking twice, I did not want to ask a third time because this was like the very beginning of the interview. I'm not, I've never interviewed someone before. And I thought, okay, I asked a second time. He didn't answer. Maybe that just means he's not understanding me or he doesn't want to answer. But I was trying to ask, um, was it intentional how you phrased your intro video? Be, by saying, I am the inventor of Jelly Belly, I'm giving away one of my factories, and there wasn't a clarification in the intro video that one of the factories is not Jelly Belly. And he's like, yeah, both those things are true. And they are both true. Uh, yes, they are both true. But m that wasn't really my question. My question was like, how you phrase that? Was that an intentional choice to kind of get people excited by thinking it's Jelly Belly? So what I inferred from his answer is I don't, I don't think it was intentional. Those things are both true. He wanted to say those things because, you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, you can see he's not hiding that information that it's not a Jelly Belly factory. And if you look into it, it's like not hard to find. It's just that intro video specifically that it doesn't say it's not a Jelly Belly factory. And so um, he said, yeah, it was just one reporter who had put that out, but when I made my TikTok video, the one that I took down, I because I thought it was a Jelly Belly factory, I hadn't seen anything from any interviewer. I had watched the intro video and it made me think it was a Jelly Belly factory. And maybe I didn't ask the question like in a right way because I just, I didn't get that answer. And I actually, I'm like cringing as I rewatch it because I feel like I kind of cut him off a little bit. And I'm like, ooh, Kelly. And so we get better answers moving forward though. And I really like the guy. Let me just say that. I like David. And I honestly, as we get through this, you're going to see like, I think Jelly Belly did him wrong. I really do. So, okay. So here's that first part. So I wanted to know on your intro video. So, okay. Let me just tell you how this started is I just was okay. so excited about your contest. Like, who was excited? Me. I was. Okay. And I just... You were excited, too. And I made a TikTok about it, but I made a mistake because I have watched your intro video, and that was the only Wait, thing... hold on. You made a TikTok about us? How long ago was that? I ended up deleting it, though, because I made a mistake. Okay. Because I thought it was for a Jelly Belly factory. No. We have nothing to do with Jelly yes, Belly. Yes. I've I learned that since. Do with Jelly Belly. Uh, yes. Some one person made that mistake. I'm the founder of Jelly Belly. I never said that, that I, I'm currently associated with them. Yes. Nor would I care to be. 
And that's what I found out once I looked more into it. And the reason okay. I was confused is because in the intro video, you had said, I'm the founder of Jelly Belly. I oh, yeah. and then true. Yeah. And then later on in the video, it's like, and I'm giving away one of my candy factories for the grand prize. Right, and, and that's true also. Yes, I, I understand both are true. And Good. so that's why... I made the mistake of thinking it was a Jelly Belly factory. And then, like I said, once I looked more into it, I found out it wasn't. And so okay. I Thank was you wondering. For learning the truth. We're not trying to deceive anybody. Well, that was actually what I wanted to ask. Was that an intentional thing? Like to get people to think it was Jelly Belly? Or was that just. Oh, oh no. It was, it was one reporter's mistake. And he, you know, a lot of people don't fact check anymore. Mm hmm. Because they wanted to get it out there, and they're all under a, a gun as far as time. Mm -hmm. And so they don't fact check it. And that was one person's mistake, and it's led to a lot of aggravation because people were saying I was trying to scam them. I'm not trying to scam anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and I had, I did, like I said, once I looked more into it, that's why I took my video down. And then. How many, how many subscribers potentially were, would have been able to see that? On TikTok, I have about 133,000 subscribers. Wow, 133,000. And hey, how about other methods, other ways? I have a very small YouTube channel, and um, I have only like, I think like 1,400 followers on YouTube. Okay. And that's it. I just have YouTube and TikTok. Yeah. I noticed, oh, that's the other thing, is I noticed you updated your website. It looks way better than when I first looked at it. Thank you for that. Uh, we, had a, we had a great team working on it, mm -hmm. and people that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Is that the kind of work that you do, if, if they ever have too much work to help us? I do design websites. I don't program them, so I I work with a programmer. So I'll design it, and then the programmer actually does like the back end stuff. Gotcha. Oh, but I have questions about how you hide your golden uh, dog tags, and I okay. saw that you. I can't really answer too much about that, but. I'll okay. try if I can. Okay. What's the question? We put one in each state. Yes. I was wondering, so when you do that, did you have people in each state that you have connections with and then they hide it? Or were you flying out to each state? I can't answer that. Oh, okay. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. This is run on the up and up. It's not like that stupid McDonald's monopoly. You know what happened there? I heard uh, that... There was like an inside job with that one year. Oh yeah, the company that was providing all of the the expertise, Simon was their name. There's a great documentary on that mm -hmm. on Netflix. Okay, I'll check it out. Check it out. We do not want anything like that happening uh -huh. with us. Well, and I know you have like a different code, secret number to verify um, on the winners, right? Correct. Okay. When the winner, okay, so is there also a university the winner will be going to? Yes, you've been doing some studying, young lady. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to know about that. Is it like, are they going to get a certificate afterwards, or is it like a degree? It's a two-week course okay. in candy making comprehensive uh -huh. uh, at the University of Wisconsin. Oh, in Wisconsin. Madison. Okay. They are known for their candy course. Uh -huh. Right now, it's online because of all this COVID thing. Uh -huh. By the time the ultimate treasure is, uh, uh, contest is over, I don't know if they're going to be online or or if they're going to attend it there. But if they attend it there, we will pay an uh, airplane fare uh -huh. for the, uh, whoever wins. Okay. And Round trip so that they can this course has not only comes where you go for two weeks, and it also comes with a, a course that you take home with you with all kinds of things. Oh, okay. It's not just okay. You go there and you you watch the professor do something. Wow. This oh. comes with a comprehensive 
study guide. Yeah, I think that's. I think that was really important. Really, if you're going to have a candy company, you should have get to learn a little bit about it. So we're giving them the course at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Mm -hmm. Here's the most important thing we're giving them. Okay. We're giving them my mentorship until for at least a year. Okay. Or until they get successful. I will never, mm -hmm. I won't stop until they're successful. You're not going to, you're going to take them under your wing until they are ready. Yeah, I'm going to take them under their wing until they're successful. Until they're successful. Oh, and that yeah. was a question. So, like, so you have other other factories? Because you said one of we your factories. Yeah. Factories. So we're also, we're also in the CBD jelly bean business. Yeah, I saw that? that on your Spectrum Confections website. Oh, you are a genius. <laughs> uh, that is not part of it. Uh huh. Because you, you cannot mix. CBD candy in the same factory ah. as you can other things. You don't want any cross contamination. That, that makes sense. Um, so, would this Does that make sense to you? <laughs> yes, that makes sense. They have my brain for that year. If I come up with a good candy product, I will get. I will give them the opportunity of making it there. Wow. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime a opportunity. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Change someone's so life. people on, that have nothing better to do on the internet that say, well, you know what? It's an empty building now. Well, guess what? It's not an empty building. It's got some equipment in it. And it, we need to talk to the people. We want to know what kind of candy. We promise that they will be able to have candy in there that they want to make. Yeah, you have to wait till you have the winner, so you know what the you winner might, wants to do. We cannot do chocolate in Florida. Oh, yeah. No, that's not going to work. Melt, melt, melt. It would melt like nobody's business, even when it's being shipped. Oh, yeah. I used to live in the Florida Keys. I am uh, familiar oh, so with the weather. Yes, and the humidity. I mean, so it's just every day. I'm thinking of what we possibly will do. We are experts in powder. Mm-hmm. Like we make the sandy candy. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Shame on you. <laughs> Sorry. We make a product for 25 years called sandy candy. Uh-huh. It goes in every school for fundraising. It's oh, okay. Sand art that you can eat. Oh, cool. So we might offer them that. Uh-huh. We might offer, we have a whole line of liquids that we make. Oh, okay. Novelty items. We mm -hmm. do a urine cup. It's oh, formula P. The real urine cup and the the liquid is yellow. Oh my goodness! Oh yeah, I saw you do salvation candy, but then you also do like um, gore, we like Halloween, and uh, Halloween, like exactly. teach and eat. We do something called Uncle Ernie's. Yeah. Ashes. Oh. <laughs> it looks like ashes. We do yeah. crazy. Oh, you have to be crazy to do stuff that we do. Well, I mean, those make fun gifts. And we do blood, we do blood cloths. We yeah, do yeah, yeah. Cool. So, believe me, it's my job to make sure this person that takes over this factory is happy. Uh-huh. They get, they get a 4,000 square foot factory free and clear with no debt. There's no, no loans, no nothing. Wow. And so they'll probably, and they'll probably want to relocate to Florida then at that point. I, you know what? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. If they do, they can sell the building mm -hmm. and use that money any way they want. There's no stipulations that they have, mm -hmm. they, they have to stay there. So, oh, that's a question. So, uh, is there a staff? Like, will they have a staff that they hire? No, or will they will be? not have a staff. But you know what? It's so easy to find people okay. to work in Florida. Oh, my gosh. You're so right. Because when I moved to Florida... I right. was like, oh, I need to find a job. And w within three days, I was already working, and I was actually a little annoyed because I was like, well, I thought I'd have a couple weeks to enjoy the weather before I'm put to work. That's funny. So that, that's the least of the problem. Yeah, it, it's very easy to get a job down there because everyone's a tourist. Say that one more time. The last Ev sentence. Everyone's a tourist. There's The locals yeah, right. need to hold right. the fort down. So we want this to be the best treasure hunt in the world. Mm-hmm. 
Any other questions that you might have? Um, well, I had been wondering about the um, employees, but you kind of already answered that because it's not like your employees are going over there. They're starting this business, and you're going to help them with that, and they can hire their own employees. Which you hit it right on the nose, and it'll be very easy, and I'll show them how to do it if they can. So it's not like help. someone who's been working for you for 20 years all of a sudden is I mean, going to have a new boss. For 20 years, they're not property. Yeah, exactly. So you can't, we, I mean, mm -hmm. we need them in our other place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Because this is like a new thing. Right. I have a question. I, well, I have a question about the grand prize, but before we get to that, can I ask one more question about Jelly Belly? You can ask anything you want to know. Okay. So I heard, well, I had read in an article on um, a site called Heavy. In the article, they were saying how, okay, so that you invented Jelly Belly, and then Golitz Candy Company, you had worked with them, like, back in the day to get you know, the candy made and distributed and you had some original flavors and you had a business partner and that your business partner sold the rights to Jelly Belly. And then you had, you know, gotten paid for the candy. But then when I go to the Jelly Belly website, they made a little statement about you and they said that, oh, David is an independent third party who came up with the name. I'm reading this. Who came okay, up with the name Jelly Belly? Okay, you want to know the truth? Yes, that's what I'd love to know. Why are they Have saying? You seen my documentary? Okay, I keep seeing things to watch your documentary, and I think I need to watch it. I haven't had okay. the time. It explains everything in there. Okay. It explains about the partner that I had. Mm -hmm. We both sold it mm -hmm. to to. Uh, Herman Gullitz, mm -hmm. as they were called back then. Mm -hmm. They were a small little candy company in Oakland. They had 10 people working there. Mm -hmm. I, I would like you to watch that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not prepared for that one. Okay. You can watch it for free. You get on the Amazon Prime? Yeah, I mean, I've seen, I know where it is. I just, I, I've been I saying they've been to watch it. It explains it yeah. so much better than I, I, I understand. Okay. So then uh, I, I can I can go through the steps with you. What you happened? Don't. Would you like to know? Um I, if it's there I don't need to waste your time. I don't want to no, make you, you you're not wasting my time. Stop that. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Okay. I started jelly bellies. Uh -huh. I, I have a canceled check that says God Jelly Belly. Yeah, at eighteen twenty four West Main you know, Amber, signed by David H. Klein in 1977. Mm -hmm. In 1977, I started Jelly Bellies in 76. Okay. Maybe that check was 76. It was 76. Okay. The check. I owned 100% of Jelly Bellies. Mm -hmm. I was not a third party or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That third party is a bunch of baloney. Mm -hmm. I started Jelly Bellies in 1976. I was also in the wholesale nut business with a partner by the name of Cal. Okay. My father-in-law was a loan shark. Oh, okay. He got arrested for mm -hmm. loan sharking. Okay. My mother-in-law called me up and she said that if I didn't find him a store of his own, he would go back into the loan sharking business and be arrested and put away. Oh, wow. Cal, my partner, had a store that he owned himself in San Marino, mm -hmm. which is a very wealthy community in oh, Northern okay. California. Okay. They don't allow any apartments in there. Oh, wow. Or, or franchises. Whoa, because okay, very. Starbucks, they allow Starbucks. Oh. <laughs> of course, so Starbucks. I approached my partner, Cal, and I said, Cal, you have a store called Garvey Nuthouse Number 2. I would like to trade you that store for half of Jelly Belly. And that's what happened so that I could have a store for my father-in-law. Yeah. The store was worth nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I needed a place that he could go to and think he was working. Okay. You, got, you need to keep him busy. You hit it right on the nose. So, 
when you watch the documentary, okay. you'll see him in the store. He's a he's a little guy uh -huh. with suspenders and uh -huh. a mustache. Okay, I will I will keep look a lookout. I will. That store, that store cost me half a jelly belly. Wow. Okay. When Cal came aboard, it went to his head. Oh goodness. And he owned part of Jelly Belly. Mm -hmm. He would be going around at all the trade shows, especially the ones that Herman Golitz was at. Mm-hmm. Saying, I'm the president of Jelly Belly. Oh man. He was making a pet out of himself, asking how business was. Oh. He was an annoyance is basically what he was. Mm-hmm. They hated him from the <laughs> moment they met him. Oh my goodness. From the moment he came aboard. They were on me to buy the trademark. Uh-huh. They called me up one day, and they said, we're coming to town, and we're going to buy the trademark, and we're not going to leave until we do. Wow. And I talked to the sales manager, Rich Schaefer, who was in the documentary, mm -hmm. and I said, Rich, what if Herm, Herm's the owner of the company, what are, you, what are you guys coming here for? What, what if I don't sell to you? And he said, Dave, between you and me, Herm is prepared to go back to Oakland. They were not in Fairfield then. And cut you off completely. You will not have another pound of product. Wow. We're going to change the name of the product. There'll be no more Jelly Belly. And by the time we know you will sue us, but by the time it goes to court, you'll be broke. So you didn't have a Those choice. the exact words. I was not a third party, nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the check, the deal that we had was a 20 year non-compete clause. Mm -hmm. You could not have a 20 year non-compete clause legally in California. That's so the long. will not allow it. Mm -hmm. It's unconscionable. Mm -hmm. We had a 20 year non-compete clause and they paid us $20,000 a month mm -hmm. for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Now, that was from the year 1980 which they claim was my last contact with them, mm -hmm. to 2000. They sent me a check. They sent me and Cal a check every month. Uh -huh. So sounds kind of like we had some kind of contact. Yeah. Every month. <laughs> every month. Every month. Yeah. They, they conveniently are forgetting about that. They're making it sound like I approached them with the idea, oh, guys, let's make a Jelly Belly, and then I left it on their doorstep, and then I never talked to them again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it really, was, it really sounded like a completely different thing on their website. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Those four years, I was on the Mike Douglas show twice. Mm -hmm. I was on AM Los Angeles five times. Okay. I went all around the country doing interviews. I was in People Magazine in a bathtub of jelly beans. Oh, oh, that must be the picture. The picture. I see the picture with your face and you have jelly beans all around you. That's a different one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was in a bathtub. Oh, okay. OJ Simpson was on the cover. Oh, okay. I did not see my family at all for those four years. Oh, the my goodness. Years that supposedly I did nothing. Wow. I got the product to the point that their small little dinky factory could not produce anymore. Mm hmm. They had told me in the beginning, I talked to Herm, the owner. I said, Herm, are you going to be able to keep up with the demand on this? He said, we will any order that you throw our way, we can, we can do. If I would have had the brains back then, I would have flown up to Oakland where they were and seen that they were a Mickey Mouse small little factory mm -hmm. that had 10 employees that had to run to the post office hoping there was a check there so that they can make payroll. Wow. Every one of these things I would swear in court under a Bible that they're true. Mm -hmm. Now they tried to reinvent history. They came out with a book. That, I'm not bitter about this, by the way, if I sound like I'm bitter. Okay. Because it, it gave employment to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They came out with a book, The 30 Year History of Jelly Bellies. How many times do you think I was mentioned in there? I'm good. Can I guess? Sure. Zero. Zero is the right number. I don't. Yeah, it sounds like they're trying Zero to pretend right like you didn't exist. Wow. Zero is the right number. 
these people were the nicest people in the world. Wow. When I started it. You could not meet any nicer people in the world. The money went to their head. He, Herm got a divorce and his whole lifestyle changed. Wow. And he became a, he became different than he was. Yeah. He was a farm boy, basically. He liked going on a tractor. Mm-hmm. Before. Beforehand. Yeah, before. Now he owns tanks. Oh, wow. Did you hear about the, the tanks that he owns? I did not hear about the tanks. He owns tanks. <laughs> wow. And one of his tanks killed a man. Oh, my. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what he's turned into, a tank. He collects tanks. Wow. Yeah. Go to Google, put in Jelly Belly Tank Death. D E A T H. You'll read all about it. Okay. He killed his, his best friend with a tank. <gasps> his Not best. Him, but, his, but his son in law did. Oh, my goodness. So his son in law got in one of them and killed somebody. Son, well, not deliberately. Well, this yeah. Guy was, this guy was sitting at the edge backwards mm-hmm. and he ran over a bump. The guy fell down and he was crushed. Oh, my goodness. Who owns tanks on their private property? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you know anybody that owns a tank? Not a single person. No, I don't either. So this whole, this man's life, whole, you would not, I, I, I haven't talked to him in years. Mm-hmm. I don't enjoy talking to him. Uh, when we made the documentary, listen to this. When that documentary was made about 10 years ago, yeah. I called up Candy Industry Magazine, which is the leading magazine in the field. I talked to the publisher, and I said to him, Bernie, you have never in, I'm Dave Klein. He said, yeah, I know who you are. I said, you know I invented Jelly Belly? He said, yes, of course, everybody knows. I said, you have never interviewed me. He said, well, okay. I said, we're doing a documentary and about my life. I would like you to watch it and then interview me. Mm-hmm. He said, I would love to. Mm-hmm. Okay, I sent him a copy of the documentary. Yeah. What do you think he did with it? <laughs> oh my goodness, what? He called up Herm. <gasps> he sent Herm the copy. What? He sent Herm, the owner of Jelly Bellies, the copy of it. Wow. And then he said, Herm, then I called him about three weeks later. And I said, are you ready for the interview? He said, Herm doesn't want me to do it. And I said, what do you mean Herm doesn't want you to do it? He said, just what I said. And mind you, Herm was a big advertiser in there. Mm-hmm. He said, Herm does not want me to do it. Wow. And I said, did you get my permission to send that to him? Exactly. He said, no. Yeah. I said, you know what? He could, have, he could have tried to get an injunction against us. Uh-huh. Because he's got money to do anything. Yeah. It's like... And I said to him, you have violated every code of journalism I could ever think of. Yeah. And then I said to him, all, all I've used your magazine for is to line my birdcage. I'm going to cancel my subscription. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Obviously, that wasn't true because I love this magazine. Yeah, why yeah. Would I, why would I want uh-huh. to be interviewing you? Yeah. He ruined all the trust you that you had. You are very perceptive. Oh. You understand exactly what I'm telling you, don't you? Yeah. yeah I mean, oh, and that's... I people that wouldn't understand what I'm telling them. Oh. I'm, so, I'm sorry. You are very perceptive. I'm very impressed. Oh, thank you. I've never interviewed someone before. Well, we're just talking. Well, not but... your interview. <laughs> Well, oh, can I ask some questions about the ultimate prize? Sure, of course you can. Okay, so I on the on your website, I saw you know whoever enters in the five thousand dollar test or not test, but you know scavenger hunt, they are eligible right. to go into the ultimate right. prize. Not just the winner of the five thousand yeah. dollar. Golden yeah, everyone. And so everybody gets a chance. I except except for one person. 
One per- oh the the person who won won, or did the they get a chance that to? That, that, that we gave five thousand okay, dollars yeah. to in Georgia. Uh huh. Do you know about that or no? Oh no, I didn't realize people had already started winning now. Well, she found it when she was looking for another treasure hunt. Oh oh no. So she called me up, and it would have totally ruined the all of Georgia. There's yeah. A thousand people ready yeah. to go hunt for it. Yeah, they need a chance to win. Yeah, come on. They paid. So she found it. She retrieved it. Mm Mm-hmm. Didn't really know what to do. Uh What would you have done if that that person had called you up and said, I have it. I tried to buy a ticket for Georgia, but all thousand tickets were gone. I would... What would you have... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What would you have done? Well, I mean, for the lady finding the ticket? Yeah, what would you have done? I would have done one of two or two things, maybe. There's two routes. You could either redo your entire state, which is probably a lot of work to come up with, or you'd have to just have her be quiet somehow, but then that requires you trusting this person not to tell anybody. Okay. And then... Well, we decided to, to give her 5000 Yeah, yeah. She came down from Georgia. Yeah. We were in Florida, so Georgia's not so yeah. far. She got here in about three hours. I don't know how she got here that fast. Uh-huh. About three and a half hours. I handed her a check for $5,000 yeah. at our bank to make sure it was cashable. Yeah. I mean, I mean, she did find it. I mean, not really not really the yeah. way you were expecting, but I guess she did find right. one. We, then I, I went back to Georgia to, re, to hide it again. Okay, so you, yeah. And so I, I posted it. Some people said, well, that doesn't seem right with her. I mean, we had to pay $50. Mm-hmm. And then I said to these people, she does not have a right to be in the ultimate contest. Mm-hmm. I've already told her that. And she found it. So what did you expect me to do? Yeah. It kind of just puts you in a, between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. But something that you don't want to happen... Maybe you don't mind it happening on your 50th state because we're rolling them all out one at a time. Uh huh. It happened before the uh, anything started. Mm hmm. Yeah, not the not the best timing. Not the best timing. Yeah. In the world, but you know what? Sometimes things don't go the way you planned them. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Do you have confidence that everything I told you is true? I believe you. Have you watched any of our videos that are on YouTube? Okay, so I've been looking into this a lot, and I saw your YouTube channel, and you had a ton of videos, and I'm going, oh my goodness, I need to, I have a full-time job, and it's like, oh, I need to sit down and watch some stuff, (laughs) and it's like... I mean, they're really, really interesting. I I know you have the channel, and I feel bad, like I'm not prepared enough. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. I need to watch more stuff. It's just, it's a time issue. It's just a time you issue. You only have so many hours in the day. Mm-hmm. But I do know about it, and I have okay. looked at your yes, Facebook. One, I'm on with my partner Stephanie. Yes, Stephanie is the lady in the video with you. She seems very nice. Yes, she's had extensive uh, experience in treasure hunting. Oh, cool. This is so cool. I can't wait to tell people because I made a video yesterday where I had tried to call, but it just said the voicemail box was full. So I was like, oh, sorry. We are inundated with calls. I'm sure. I'm sure everyone wants to talk about it. All the messages. Mm -hmm. 50 new ones spring up. Wow. Yeah, so I actually was like, oh, well, I guess that's the end of it. And so it's so cool. It's so cool that I got to talk to you. I'm glad you did too. This has been a great conversation. Yes. I just want you to say watch the documentary. Yeah, and I will put that in there too. Okay, good. Okay, great. Thank you so much. It was so good to meet you, David. It's been my my pleasure. You are very positive to talk to. You actually energize me, so thank you for that. Thank you. You have a great day. Thank you. You too, if you have any more questions, don't hesitate, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That was invigorating. My cats want lunch so bad. They usually get lunch at 1. <laughs> All right. It is now 7.55, and I finished recording around... Oh.
I finished recording around two o'clock. So I've been working on this for six hours. My bun is messier, but I was just so excited that as soon as I finished the interview, I was like, oh, ooh, I want to get it out. I want to get it out. And yeah, uh, I just finished editing it. I'm about to post it. This was so exciting. And you know what? My opinion has completely changed about David and the prize sounds amazing. It's life changing. I, I mean, you're going to get this factory and not only are you getting it, it sounds like David is going to be with you the whole way. He said one year minimum or until you are successful. He's going to give you the tools, the training, it sounds an apprenticeship pretty much, and then it's your factory. So it sounds like people who were saying, oh, the factory is empty. Yeah, because the winner needs to decide what they want to do. It's going to be their business. This is like great. This whole thing was great. There's so much more information about what the ultimate prize is now that the website, his website, the gold ticket didn't say. So we have all those answers. And honestly, okay. Remember like in my first video, how I was going to website after website and they were all saying, no, he's not the founder. He's not the founder. And I think that's just because Jelly Belly said he's not the founder. And then the news sites were like, well, Jelly Belly said he wasn't. And it just ended there. Um, my opinion of Jelly Belly is, ne is now negative. And my opinion of David is now positive. I've completely changed my mind about how I <laughs> felt from video one. Let me know how you feel about the situation if you've made it this far into the video. Okay, I guess that's it.